And so we're about to start another episode. And you haven't even heard what she was saying yet. I'm so excited. I'll just say, this is Elise Rawls. <laughs> hi. And this is her voice. <laughs> say hi. Hello. And this is her laugh. Mm. <laughs> just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there it is. See? Perfect. <laughs> and yeah, this is another episode of the Holly Amen podcast, Hi. but it's also a live on, live eyes, on Jesus. on eyes on Jesus. <laughs> alive, we're alive. Alive, and we're alive. We're alive. A live stream of we're His alive goodness. On alive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Jesus. please say what you were saying, Elise. And I asked her why she was crying when we were doing <laughs> the the switching over to. A public live and she said and then Cheyenne said you'll hear <laughs> I'd love to hear well I I just said I've got to stop wanting people to like me so much like mm. that's still a big issue I can see wow this is not a flaw no. this is understanding this is salvation this is sanctification <laughs> this is this is not wrong. This is right. Everything. <laughs> Whoa. He's doing such a deep work in you, huh? <laughs> I know he's so happy. <laughs> I just opened my Bible to a note that I'm sure I wrote from some sermon here or something and it says you must humble yourself to love no (laughs) oh man I was just thinking back to that conversation with my coworker, and just how much I held back because I didn't want him to come against me but he was a believer so it was like why like why do I have to explain this but I felt like I don't want him to think bad about me and so I'm just gonna like not say certain things or you know like try to Jesus (laughs) whoa I just don't know why I care so much I really don't know (laughs) and I don't want to When I'm where you are right now, where I perceive you to be, I ask God why. And I trust his timing on showing me. And I say, Lord, you've you've revealed to me this place in my heart. I wasn't even aware of it. Lord, would you show me why? And he will. (laughs) It might be now. Wow. It might be in a dream. It might be in a sermon. He will reveal to you to heal you. <laughs> oh. He will reveal oh. the place in your heart that needs to be healed. Because he doesn't just reveal it to bring it up and like shame you it's or something. Not to sh- no, it's he reveals not to, to shame heal. you. He reveals... Things in our heart to That's heal good news. more Thank of you. our heart. <laughs> to heal more of our heart. Thank you, Lord. It's not, he's Thank not you, mad Jesus. about us. Oh, right. You, he's not mad about it. <laughs> this means he'll get more of you, see. Oh. See, he, he wants more of you. <laughs> <laughs> he loves you. He, he loves having your heart. He wants even more. It's about him wanting our heart. He wants our heart. That's the that's everything. See, the heart is everything. Everything. And so I was excited as this was happening because I know whatever he's doing in you, he'll do in many. Thank you. This will open up a place for people who are watching to see, wow. Yes. I still really care about people's approval I still want to be light I still love them in a way more than I love Jesus yeah. is this what you're saying and it, because we had just talked about Jesus said to his followers 
if your love for for others doesn't look like hate compared to your love for me, you're not worthy of following me. Thank you. And I believe that that I believe something a revelation of that is whoever we love, whoever's even still in the running with Jesus. I say the best way to make sure that Jesus is first is don't have a second. <laughs> yes. Woo. The way to make sure that you are putting God first is don't put anyone second. So my husband, I love him through Jesus. My children, I love them through Jesus. This is to make sure they don't become idols. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't mean you don't love people. It doesn't mean you hate anyone. He said love even your enemies. So this is not about you can't love people. It's how you love them. How you love them. And you love them through him first. Because then if we love them more, we'll follow them. We'll be ashamed of him. And he we said. We water the gospel down mm-hmm. for them. Right. And he yeah. said if we're ashamed of him here, he'll be ashamed of us yeah. there. Right. And I, I just I read that in like Mark. That. You just read that? I just read it and I thought, I, I thought I saw it differently than I ever had before. Like, oh, I I see what you mean by that. It's not just like a like an outright, you know, um, like I don't believe in God and right, you know, right. He's it's he's not talking fully, to to me, right? <laughs> you know, right. like that is what we talked about in the first thing. What you're experiencing. Is lowering, lowering your flame. <laughs> That's how the Lord showed me that because <laughs> of how others reacted to me in the church, <laughs> you weren't here. That's what we just talked about. <laughs> that she was not here for this first, the first episode with Maddie yeah. of the podcast. And I know if you're on live, you haven't heard it yet, but we'll tell you how. Yes. What we talked about, Elise. What? Is that she, when the Holy Spirit came to me, he said, why is your flame so low? And I said, oh, Lord, forgive me. I thought it was high. And he said, the fire I've put in you is hot. But because of the reactions of those around you that you love and that you want to love you, basically, because of the repercussions, you have chosen to lower the flame level. Turn your flame up. And literally, she was talking about how she heard people judging me and saying, oh, it's not necessary. Oh, it's not, 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 whatever. And, and we were just talking about all the different ways. Then she was talking about how people judge Louisa. Oh, yes. And then they started judging her. So it's true. It's not a figment of your imagination. Yes. They're going to hate me. Right. <laughs> They're not going to like me. Jesus said, if you love me, the world will hate, hate you. you. Yeah. Now, that doesn't just mean people who say we hate God. This means, means the worldly church. That's right. Anyone oh. who loves the world will hate us because we love Jesus. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, I'm afraid they'll hate me. They will. They're supposed to. Yeah. It's a promise of God. <laughs> it's a promise. It's a sign of love for Jesus. Yeah. It can be embraced. And look at me. He'll teach you how. <laughs> I was just asking. That. <laughs> He'll teach you how. Chucky, look at his patience with Peter. <laughs> look what I just looked down to. I'll read it. Read it in the mic. I just looked down and it's and pointed and just pointed and it says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you <laughs> and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. <laughs> See, 
all your angry enemies lie there confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. <laughs> Referring to demons at this point. Right. But you don't, this is not a place of shame for you. Enough to repent and return. <laughs> Enough, and if you this is foreign to you, the Bible says to feel shame at what you've done. I know a lot of the church says you shouldn't feel shame. The Bible says opposite. You should feel shame at what you've done. Enough to repent and return to Christ. But it's not like, oh, I'm awful. I'll always be awful. No, it's like, what have I been doing? <laughs> trying to do this on my own. I love you. He's smiling <laughs> like, come, I'll teach you. He will teach you how to embrace fear of the Lord. He'll teach you how to love him more. He'll teach you how not to operate out of needing your <laughs> approval. Mm -hmm. He'll teach you to be brave. In fact, the way you'll be brave is you'll take courage from his presence. <laughs> you'll start remembering he's part of those conversations. He is as real as the guy you were talking to. <laughs> He's part of the conversation. Wow. So you can literally, instead of being intimidated by this presence, you can be invigorated <laughs> and take <laughs> courage from the unseen one who is silently witnessing the whole thing. He's not just witnessing to get you in trouble. Oh, Jesus. He is there to give you strength. Look at his patience with Peter. Be encouraged by the Lord's patience and love and plan. <laughs> For Peter, he prophesied that he would deny him. Oh. <sighs> and I am so thankful that you are feeling so much Sorrow and conviction over something that people would consider not even a thing. Right. Right. This is proof for me of salvation and sanctification. <laughs> Otherwise, honey, you wouldn't care. <laughs> oh, right. 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 He wouldn't care or you'd ignore it, push it away. You know what I keep thinking right now? how true vulnerability will lead to repentance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, like, Chalky didn't choose to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. The Lord's just doing a work that's leading, his kindness is leading to repentance, which is leading to more of him. Thank you. Like, it's just so beautiful. He, he's so beautiful. <laughs> He's so merciful. He's so merciful. And I'm thinking about how if people decide to watch this episode, they'll be able to see an actual, like, move of God. <laughs> like, what if this is the first time someone's ever seen a move of God? You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he's really real. And she literally came in talking about the something that confirmed what Maddie just talked about. <laughs> what we just discussed was lowering your flame for Jesus because of what others think. And not just atheists, but people yeah. who claim to be are in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so thankful we don't have to make any apologies for Jesus. I know. <laughs> Amen. He is who he says he is, <laughs> and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just like, when I was talking to this coworker, we were talking about um, a previous workplace. We worked together in the same place before, and it was a Christian company. Okay. Um, and we talked about how, well, he had mentioned, like, you know, you know, we are in this Christian bubble, you know, and 
he was saying it like it was a bad thing, but at the same time, I was like, well, no, not everybody is a Christian just because they say they are. You know, like there's a there's a living that out that has to be true for that profession to be true. So I don't I don't really think that that's true. But everybody, yes, calls themselves a, a Christian at the company that I worked at, and he was like, you know, and now I think you're just like not in that bubble anymore, and it's it's probably hard for you. And I'm like, I wasn't in a in a Jesus bubble there. I'm in a Jesus bubble all the time just because I'm around people who love Jesus mm. all the time. You're in Christ. Yes. That is a Jesus bubble. Yes. Come the on. Jesus now. bubble is Jesus. <laughs> we are in Christ. Yes. <laughs> and so I don't I'm I'm not around people who use foul language or who talk mm. coarsely or who make sacrilegious jokes or I'm just I'm not around people who s- celebrate occultic holidays like I'm just not around that. Right. So when I am it's jarring. And he he was saying it to me like almost like this is healthy for you to not be in a and I'm like, no, I like being in my bubble. I really do. I like it. I do too. I, I, I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't want to be in any other bubble than this one. He was kind of preaching balance. Yeah. And, and with the it's world. one of the first things that I was, I was um, directed to by a pastor. You know, you need more balance. So like... For every spiritual thing you do, you need to do something just secular, Mm -hmm. carnal, worldly to give you some balance. Yes. And that's what it felt like he was trying to say. And he was like, well, when I went to meet the team, um, you know, we weren't talking about finance or God. And I was like, this is awesome. And I I felt to ask him and I didn't. But I wanted to say, why? Why Mm -hmm. is that awesome that you weren't talking about God? Because I was sharing with him, there was wow. one moment at the very end of my trip where a girl started talking about Jesus, and I was like, yes, we're talking about Jesus. Oh, my gosh, I feel like I've been dying this whole time. Not, like, spiritually, but just, like, there was no, nobody was talking about Jesus. Nobody yeah. was reverent toward him at all. And this mm-hmm. was on the new work trip. Yes. Which and, is not a Christian company. Right. And so this girl starts talking about Jesus, and I'm like, I'm 15 minutes late to my Uber because I just can't stop talking about him once it starts I'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh yes and so I'm telling him about this and and he countered with well when I went you know we didn't talk about finance or God and I was like this is awesome and I'm like why is that awesome you're a believer and and there were so many things that I felt to say but I didn't and I should have because I I was so much more concerned with keeping him thinking I'm, a, you know, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know what I care about so much. Right. But I cared enough to not say what I should have said. Mm. And then just like little things just with my coworkers, because again, I'm not, outside of work, everybody that I'm friends with mm. loves Jesus. You know, I don't really have. It's biblical. Yeah. That's scriptural. Thank right. you, Jesus. And so I'm just like, I this is I surround myself with, with y'all. Right. And so when I'm at work, it I sometimes I feel like, oh, I, I want to say that, but I I don't know if they'll think I'm and it's like, why why do I care so much? Why like if if I were to die today and stand before Jesus and he were to say to me, why didn't you? I would not know why. I wouldn't know what to say. I don't have any good reason. And I I see it, but I, I'm thankful that you said that he'll help me because I just kept wondering, like, I don't know how. I really don't know how. I, I want to be bold and I want to be, I want my flame to be high and I want people to know where I stand. And I think some people kind of do. I mean, I, I, when I was there on the trip, we didn't part, I didn't participate in any of their conversations. You know, I, I think people get it, but like, I don't want to, I don't want people to think they get it about me, you know, right. like where I stand with Jesus. Like, mm, but see, you need to know where you stand. <laughs> 
is showing you where you stand. And he's asking you to come closer. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because many times we still want others to know where we stand mm-hmm. for their benefit. But we don't know where we stand. But what about mm-hmm. his benefit? What about his benefit? <sighs> oh. he, he, more than he wants to use you as a witness to your company, he wants your company. He wants oh. your company. <laughs> He's not trying to use you just to win your company. He wants your company. Now He's that. winning your company. <laughs> now that needs to be heard. And as you're standing closer, 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 it won't be hard. It won't even be an effort. It'll be so easy to let him speak to you, speak to them through you. Because he's there and you believe it. Because it's actually him. It's not you doing the work for him. <laughs> Which is, I think, what I thought it was. Yeah. Still. <laughs> Even though we hear this every week. <laughs> yeah, but as we move through stages of life, I mean, the Lord showed me I was operating on the same thing with social media. And even in a way with live stream. I so feared criticism from people that I still wish felt different about me. And and so he took me to some places and through some things to get it really straight. Mm-hmm. To where now I feel that every single day I live is one more day only to love him, yeah. love others, and share the gospel. It's the only reason I'm alive. Like, actually... I believe right. that I would already be gone, mm-hmm. except for to preach the gospel and to live the gospel. Yeah. There's no sense preaching the gospel if you don't live it. That, you know? mm-hmm. So truly loving him, being in him, and believing he's drawing me to himself closer and closer. <laughs>